Good morning, traders. T.G. Watkins here. It is January 4th when I'm recording this. I hope you guys are doing well out there. And welcome to your daily five. So let's get into it. All right. So one of the first things I wanted to show you guys, because this really kind of gives you an understanding as to what we're dealing with from a, an overall market perspective. You know, here's breadth. This is the number of stocks over their 20-day SMA and their 50-day SMA. And we have had a great market. I mean, obviously, November, December was absolutely amazing. And then when we've got into the end of December, everything was really, really overbought. And we, the question was, okay, well, when are we going to start pulling back? How are we going to fix this situation? And you could just see the number of stocks over their 20-day SMA was just pegged. I mean, it just doesn't go higher than 90%, okay? When pretty much every single stock was over their 20-day SMA. <coughs> and you can see that the number of stocks over their 50-day SMA also got up to 90%. Like, okay, so how much further can this go, and when is the market going to pull back? Well, they did some shenanigans, and basically the big players, the hedge fund institutions, they didn't really want to sell until the beginning of the new year because they didn't want to deal with the tax implications in 2023. They probably wanted to do 2024 and anything else that, you know, mattered as far as the calendar rollover change, you know, keep it into 2023 and let's start 2024 as a new year. And so what you can see is a, you know, it was still pretty much over here. A lot of names still stayed over their 20 day SMA, but you could just start seeing a little bit of a decline, a little bit of divergence. And then more specifically right there is where you could start seeing that negative divergence. And then as of yesterday, because yesterday's data, you could see that, you know, fewer and fewer names are staying above their 20 day SMA. Okay. Which makes sense. We were starting to see that the pullbacks, the market is starting to pull back. This is totally what we've been looking for. And you can just see that this is how it's happened before, you know, just some divergences like that. Now, it's going to take a little bit longer for this one to show up, you know, the number of stocks over their 50-day SMA, because this move from November to December was so big that it's, you know, there's so much distance between price and their daily 50s, this one's going to take a little bit longer. So I could see this one staying up here for a little bit, but we also want to probably see this kind of come down a little bit in order to buy us some room. You know, this market just can't go higher when everything is already so high. We have to let some air out. We have to cycle things down. We have to give us an opportunity. So it is a good thing that we're seeing these things come down because we need that in order for the, the market to take the next leg to the upside. We got to go down in order to go up. All right. Now, if we will come over here, and this is just the actual chart of the S&P, and I want to show you guys this because I want to first show you the negative divergence. So you can see overall price went higher. The Moxie indicator went lower on the hourly time frame. There is your negative divergence. And then in the last week or so of the of 2023 in December, you could see here that we also saw some really, really drastic Moxie indicator stuff. You could see that the indicator was down. It was red every single day. And then right here, right at the top, there was your Moxie price trigger. So the Moxie indicator gave you a really good indication. Uh, it jumps from a visual standpoint with these negative divergences here and here. And then also right there, that is when the indicator went negative, and that was the beginning of the pullback. We could also just see from another price standpoint, prices outside of that third ATR is very overbought, and you could see a gap here and a gap here. And it's just, we just knew that this thing was super high, and it was going to have to pull back at some point. We're starting to see that. Now, the first area is right to the 21. You can see the price is kind of coming into the 21. Now, it might bounce. It might kind of chop a little bit sideways and then go lower. Um, it, or, you know, if it bounces, it could be a continuation. I don't think that's likely. I think that, uh, I don't know. I think we're going to probably be at the 21 for a little bit. And I have a feeling we're probably going to go lower. I don't know how much lower, but I do think we're going to go lower because I just think that there's more air that needs to be let out of the system, especially when looking at the breadth. Now, another view of this, uh, we could look at the semis. You could look at the IWM. We could look at uh, the NASDAQ. This is the weekly time frame. This is the daily time frame. And another important thing to see is that this thing really got pretty overbought. It ran right into that third ATR. You could also see it was gapping off the moving averages, so it was unsupported. Same thing here on the daily chart, overbought, extended uh, out there at that third ATR. And now we're getting these pullbacks. Now, of course, technology, you know, goes up like a rocket, going down like a rock. And that's what we're seeing. Huge moves. But then when they finally start saying, okay, we're out, uh, these things just go straight down. And so um, it's, it's a little rough, I'm sure, for some people. But, you know, this should be no surprise. As I said, we saw this kind of coming. And same thing with uh, the, our market and everything. We saw this coming. And so we look at this and say, uh, yeah, we, number one, need this. And number two, that this is just, it was overbought. So we're seeing pullbacks like this. And I just wanted to show you guys what that looked like from other ETF and uh, other 
you know, indices as far as their perspective. Uh, clearly, we're still in an overall uptrend, but we just need to pull back. So for example, on a weekly time frame, you know, pull back, pull back. This is a big pullback, and we're going to have to pull back here. So this normal ebbing and flowing of the market. That being said, I am pretty excited for whenever this pullback is finished. You know, I, I think November, November and December was not an anomaly. I think this is actually looking really good. I think that there has been broad-based market support and strength, and I'm, I'm really seeing a lot of good stuff out there. Um, one of the things to just kind of draw your attention to is, is PATH. And just as an example, you can see that PATH was basically going nowhere for a very long time. It was basing, basing, basing. We see a lot of names that have been doing this. And a lot of things had to get repriced and moved down and basically shot uh, in 2021 and 2022. Then they stopped going down. That's kind of the number one thing. Notice that they stopped going down. And in fact, they started to um, you know put in higher lows, You know something like that, or at least just going sideways. And so now it's just a matter of time. OK, when are these things going to start moving up? Well, since the market's been sniffing out that interest rates are going to start rolling over, and they have, you can see that through the TNX, then names like this started to pop up. And that is really what we saw in November. So again, this is a weekly and a daily time frame, so a little bit bigger. But look at this. We've got a nice breakout. So if you were able to catch this move, great. It was on earnings, so a little bit challenging, I think, to catch it. Uh, but you know what? That's fine. Just be patient. It was overbought, just like the rest of the market. It was extended off these moving averages, and it just needs to come down, find some support, and then hopefully it can continue to move up after that. So this is like the shot across the bow. This is just the first move, and that's why I'm very excited because look how long something like this has been going sideways, and now it's breaking out. Now we just have to wait for it to come back down to a more reasonable spot in order to pick it up and, and go long. And I think that's where we just that's where we are. We just need to be patient and wait for that opportunity. So for example, other <laughs> opportunities, I'm sure you guys have probably heard about this, but the crypto and crypto miners have been going absolutely bonkers. So Mara was one of the bigger winners. It went from $10 to, I mean, $30 at one point, but right now it's a 25. Huge move, absolutely huge move. Every single one of the Bitcoin miners also had significant moves. There were multiple to choose from. And you know what? I don't know what else says risk on other than the crypto miners running like this. Of course, there were short squeezes in there and short covering, but this was, I think, a legitimate move. And again, just like PATH, you can see these things stopped going down. And then they did one of my favorite maneuvers right, right here. They come up and then they come down and then they take off. This is a really good setup. And uh, biotech is also looking very strong like this. The small caps, I mean, this has been a very broad-based uh, run that we've seen on a lot of names like that. And uh, this was very, very nice. Right in through there, a uh, perfect move up. But again, yes, it's overbought. So now we just wait for these things to flag or pull back or do something. But the fact that these are running the way that they're running tells me that this market says risk on. And I think that it's great because that means there are going to be a lot of names to choose from. And uh, you know, even biotech, even biotech, which is a risky thing, they have been game on too. So yeah, I think there's still a lot of opportunity. We just have to dance with the market. We have to understand that right now the market is pulling back. It has to refresh and that's totally normal. And now we just have to sit back and wait for the market to pull back and then we can go again. But I think things are looking pretty good out there. So thanks again for checking out your uh, daily five with me. Now remember over here at Simpler Trading, we're still running our new year, new market sale, which is up to 30% off on most things that we offer. It's uh, the code is new 24. So come check that out. Uh, go to talk to our customer server service or go check anything out on our store and uh, yeah, go from there. All right. Well, thanks again, guys. My name is TG Watkins. You can check me out over at simplertrading.com and you can also check me out on any of the social media platforms. Uh, once again, thanks uh, and I'll catch you guys the next time.